Hello friends, how are you? I hope all of you are doing really good. So let's continue with our discussion on cost accounting standards and we are moving on to cost accounting standard 6 that is on material costing. Now for this we have already studied the whole chapter of material costing, right? When we are talking about the CAS 6 that is material cost here, what type of material we are talking about, whether we are talking about the raw material, whether we are talking about the finished goods, WIP, what type of material we are talking about. So he says this standard deals with the principles and methods of determining the cost of the material. Material for the purpose of this standard include the raw material, process material, additives, manufactured or bought out components, sub-assemblies, accessories, semi-finished goods, consumable stores, spares and other indirect material. So for this purpose, for the purpose of cost accounting standard 6, he says the material is any type of a raw material or any type of a material on which the processing is yet to be done to be converted into finished good. Okay, so that means we are not talking about the finished good here. Are we talking about finished goods in CES 6? No sir. We are talking about the raw material or any type of material on which the further processing is to be done. Right? To be converted into finished good. And when we are talking about material here, we are talking about both direct material and indirect material. That is the direct material is the one which can be easily identifiable in one unit of the finished product and indirect material is the one which cannot be identified in one unit of the finished product. So when we are talking about material cost here, we are talking about both the direct and indirect materials. So this standard deals with the following issues. Uh, with the valuation of receipt of material, issue of material to production and the assignment of material cost to the cost object. Now when we are talking about the assignment, the direct material is directly identifiable with the cost object whereas the indirect material for that we have to go through the whole procedure which we have studied in the overhead costing, right? Step 1, step 2, distribution of overheads, absorption of overheads, all those things, right? And here he said this standard does not deal with the packing material as a separate standard is being issued on the subject. So when they are talking about the CAS 6, they are not talking about the packing material because there is a separate cost accounting standard on packing material, right? When, I, when we are talking about packing material, in that standard we will discuss about the primary packing material and the se secondary packing material and what is the treatment, how it should be shown in the cost statement because there is a separate one there, right? So these are the three issues that uh, the CAS 6 helps in solving. The objective of the standard is to bring uniformity and consistency in the principles and methods of determining the material cost with the reasonable accuracy. Now when we are talking about one of the most important costs that is a material cost. Out of all the cost, the most important cost is the material cost. Why it is one of the most important? Because without material you cannot start with the production. Without material you cannot incur the labor cost. Without material cost you cannot incur the overhead cost. So it is the initial cost. It is the first and the most important, the major cost element in any of the processes, right? This standard should be applied to the cost statements which require the classification as has been written in all the uh, CES, right? Now, the principles of the measurement. Now, the principles are more or less what we have discussed uh, in material costing. He says the material receipt, the receipt of the raw material, when, we are per when you are purchasing the raw material from a supplier, it should be valued at purchase price including duties and taxes, freight inward, insurance and other expenditure directly attributable to the procurement right so all the expenditures which are directly attributable to the procurement of the material whether it is transit insurance whether it is freight we have done the cas on transportation cost net of trade discounts rebates taxes and duties refundable or to be credited now what is not to be included is if there is a tax or the duty on which the input tax credit is available you will not include that the trade discounts are to be excluded any rebates other rebates are to be excluded right like gst if you one gst registered dealer is buying from another gst registered dealer he will get the input tax credit and if you are getting an input tax credit then 
that will not form the part of your material cost because on one hand you will be paying the taxes and from the other side you will be taking back the taxes from government right in the form of itc uh, that can be quantified with the reasonable accuracy at the time of acquisition other expenditures for which the itc is not there you have to include all those expenditures freight cartage transit insurance if there are if there is any other incidental expenditures which is attributable to the procurement of that procurement of the material right so all those expenditures basically what i have told you is that right from the moment you place the order for uh, this material till the material reaches your factory any expenditures in between this two period right in this period you have to include it except for the trade discounts that is to be excluded right that is to be subtracted basically and if the gst or any other taxes on which the itc is available finance cost if there is any other finance cost incurred in connection with the acquisition material shall not form the part of material cost because that is a financial cost okay self manufactured material shall be valued including the direct material cost now self manufactured material is uh, instead of buying the raw material from outside you have a facility inside to manufacture that raw material right so that is a self manufactured material that raw material also we are manufacturing how will you value that raw material when you will be valuing the fi uh, finished good that will be whatever the direct material is used in the manufacturing of that raw material labor cost uh, then other direct cost indirect cost all the cost which is related to the production of that right you will not take the ad journal administration overheads you will not take the selling and distribution overheads because those are not attributable to this part right there is no selling expenses because we are manufacturing for ourselves we are not manufacturing for outsiders right so this is the major difference here we are manufacturing for ourselves there is no selling and distribution cost there is no journal administration cost okay shall be valued at direct material cost employee cost direct expenses factory cost uh, share of administrator overheads relating to production but excluding the share of other administrative overheads that is the journal administration overheads right finance cost marketing overheads all these things are not going to be there in case of captive so captive consumption was earlier there as cs4 but now it has been removed it is not there okay then he says whatever the spare parts are of the machinery or standby equipments or servicing equipments if they are in the nature of property or the plant and machinery then they are to be considered as asset and the depreciation is to be calculated on that but if they are not being considered as plant and equipment they are not a part of uh, that bigger plant then they are to be considered as inventory and recognized in the cost as and when they are consumed right standby equipment and servicing equipments are recognized as property plant and equipment when they meet the definition of property plant and equipment and depreciated accordingly okay normal loss or the spoilage of the material prior to reaching the factory or at places where the services are provided shall be absorbed in the cost of the balance material net of amount recoverable from the supplier insurer carriers or the recoveries from the disposal so they say if there if there is any normal loss right that is to be absorbed in the cost of good units we have already discussed about it that if you are uh, buying 100 units right at the rate of rupees 10 each right so that is 1000 now out of these 100 units 10 units uh, is your normal loss now what is left now left is 100 units but the cost will be 1000 only right your cost will increase here so the per unit cost will increase here right so 1000 divided by 90 your per unit cost will increase clear so it will be 11 rupees something so he says that if there is a, a normal loss then the cost is to be absorbed by good units right net of amount recoverable net of amount means that if there is any insurance for this normal loss then if there is, if the amount is recoverable from there this cost will decrease accordingly so presentation cost statements governed by the standard shall present the material cost as detailed below direct material shall be classified in the cost statement under the suitable heads raw material is to be shown separately component semi finished goods and sub assemblies direct material shall be classified as purchased indigenous imported indigenous means from our country imported or self manufactured indirect material shall be classified in the cost statement under suitable heads that how you have to show it under the factory overheads 
may be grouped under the major heads like tools, stores and spares, machinery, spares, jigs and fixtures, consumable stores, if they are significant, right? So this is how you have to show the material cost. The major part is what we have discussed in the case of material costing. It is all the valuations we have discussed there that how you have to value the receipt. Uh, then uh, in case of uh, the issue of the material, we have already done. There are various methods of issue. One is the FIFO method. Then you have the last in first out method. Then you have the weighted average method. Then you have the simple average method, right? And if you will go with the module, uh, there are other methods also right standard price method is there then block pricing is there so there are a uh, lot of methods which we can cover right and all those who wish to cover the cma paper 8 module series they can join it from our mobile app the series is going on there right in which we are going to discuss each and every question of the cma module paper number 8 Right, so this is all about cost accounting standard 6, that is on material costing. Now in the next lecture, we'll continue with cost accounting standard 7, that will be on employee cost. Right, so see you guys in the next lecture. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, keep studying, keep sharing. Thank you so much.